Backstage issues preventing LA Knight's push. Will Bray Wyatt be back for SummerSlam? Have WWE given up on carrying cross? Is Brian Pillman Jr. headed to NXT? Orange Cassidy is reportedly now a producer for AEW. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Sorry, Matt Cardona wears WWE Women's Title in Japan. AEW turned down the chance to sign Bret the Hitman Hart. It doesn't feel true. Alicia Fox names her dream opponents for her wrestling return. Kevin Owens reportedly suffers a major injury. Uh, WrestleMania 41 may have revealed their location. Well, not they have. WWE <laughs> may have revealed their location. They may have. Anthony Wendell is coming have. up. Right freaking now. Yes, it is. Just rolls off the tongue now, doesn't it? It's it? just so serious. Freaking is gone. It's all about the freaking. Um, and, <laughs> freaking and freaking. it should be all about LA Knight, but it, it has not been, Anthony. Mm. So, um, according to PW Torch, they reckon the reason for this is that um, he reportedly isn't the best backstage. In what sense? Um, like, like with other wrestlers. Well, with, so you know, with 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 the camera guy. Yeah. yeah. So apparently, his attitude and demeanor rubs people the wrong way. But also, it's been reported he's not the best at playing the politics game. Which in today's day and age, you shouldn't really need to, should you? Uh, but to be fair, the wrestling world's always always been about it's the politics, been, isn't it? You know? But apparently, it's not as much anymore. But still, it's uh, tripping up old LA Knight over here. Okay. Now, if you think back to WrestleMania, he was like, "Yeah, LA Knight's gonna be on the card." He wasn't. He came out. Did he even did he even appear? Did he do, do a segment? Or he just wasn't even on there? I feel like they may have done a pre-show thing for him, maybe, right, but he definitely weren't in, in the main thing. Like exactly. And then it's like, oh well, after Money in the Bank, he's gonna get a push. It's like, well, no, he hasn't. And then it's like, oh, after SummerSlam, and reportedly the reason is is that, well. There's a few people that aren't particularly high on LA Knight, especially from his backstage antics. You know what's quite ironic, though, is he gets compared to The Rock and Austin so much, but they knew how to play the politics game. This is true. Um, but apparently now, after SummerSlam, he will get a push in spite of all this. Until he doesn't, and then it'll be <laughs> after Survivor Series. The audience like him, and they just can't <laughs> figure it out. I wonder who that really feels like. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so apparently that's potentially been part of the reason why they haven't pulled the trigger on him um, just yet. But it's also reported, it could be in the same article, could be by somewhere else. Who knows? We're terrible at what we do. But Vince McMahon has apparently come around on him as well. and thinks that... Um, <laughs> come around. <laughs> I've heard those rumours before. The word around in that sentence was really important that it was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, apparently Vince is, uh, is is sold on Mr. Knight himself. So considering <laughs> oh, this is the Mr. guy Knight. who changed his name to Max Dupree and tried to change everything about him, fair play. He seems yeah, to have won him over. But um, because the know. catchphrase got in his head as well. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, but yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, that's the one. <laughs> but <laughs> I need a yes man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it'll do. He just <laughs> basically started saying, "Let me talk to you," and then realized he was doing it in like an LA night voice. I was like, "Ah." Oh. <laughs> That's what that is. Um, you know, if he's even back, depends. If Raw was smacked down with bad that week, I mean, he's we, back. That's the thing we can't tell. The only way we can tell is based on the show. After the fact, we can go, that was a Vince week. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so interesting news. Uh, I don't know how true it all is, whether or not they're just kind of hanging fire on him, but you can't deny. You can't deny how over he is with the fans. I think Triple H said after the, was it the Money in the Bank um, press conference, basically saying that good things come to those who wait and all that and it's like well come on fans have been waiting for a while now but I mean the thing is you've got to give the fans what they want but you've got to tell a story at the same time give me what I want now US title seems likely in the often well but I feel like so. they want him to be a main event guy and well main event guy so what dethrone Seth well, exactly. Or the throne Roman. He's not going to be going after Roman. He's not going to be fucking doing it either. Um, but be obviously, he had the US title tournament thing on SmackDown and he didn't make the finals. Oh, did so it's not? Like, okay. No, it's down to Rey Mysterio and Santos Escobar, obviously. Naturally, yeah. So, yeah, I don't really know what they're going to do with him. Um, but as you said, it's like people want him to be elevated. They're like, what are the main events? What to lose? Like, No, I mean, this is the thing. Unless they throw in Seth, which seems the more likely of the two options, because I don't think they want to feed. Um, Roman to LA Knight to give LA Knight the push. I don't think they're ready to take that kind of risk. No. So they might, given how long Seth had the title, they might go, well, we'll do that then. But yeah. I don't US really title like... made the most sense. So we'll see whether something happens. But, but... then what happens with Damien? Mm. There's too many people 
in the, and this is the trouble. Well, people, Damien seems set on the world heavyweight title, to be fair. But, I don't think he'll go after the US. But this is the thing, though. Everybody wants everything, don't they? So right. everybody wants Damien to get a main event push. Everybody mm. wants LA Knight to get a main event push. Everybody wants Roman to carry on with his reign. Yeah. Right? So you go, well, what do you do? Yeah. Make everyone go for Seth. Yeah. It's not fair on Seth, is it? Right. Everyone wanted Seth to get the recognition he deserved. So, so people want to for the silver medal. Yes. Um, or they're really going to piss the fans off by having LA and I finally win they get screwed over by Damien mm. yeah but um, reportedly which I would love by the way <laughs> me too just, just for the, not, not because I've got it against LA and I just for the, the reaction yeah. I would fucking love it would be <laughs> but um, so yeah he, he didn't end up getting into the um, the finals of the, of the tournament to go after Austin Theory but reportedly he will have a segment at SummerSlam Ooh. which will turn into a match so we'll see so yeah. he's that guy at the moment yeah which isn't the first time he's had that role either. But. Is John Cena busy? <laughs> yeah. I mean, to be fair, I'm sure he'd, he'd love the opportunity to go up against him. He wouldn't, but... Yeah. 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 Um, but we will see. Watch this space. Okay. No? Okay. <laughs> so, Carl. Bray Wyatt. Mm. We all remember that he had a, a match with LA Knight, of all people. Um, around the time I really didn't like LA Knight. Now I just kind of don't like him. Um... <laughs> Now, LA Knight's kind of grown on me a little, mm. but the way they were booking him back then, and then obviously the whole Bray Wyatt thing, the squash, and then the just random disappearance, uh, the whole sort of thing kind of imploded. But there was this mysterious um, illness or injury, or we're still not sure what it is, and I don't think they're going to divulge that, which is fine. He's entitled to his privacy. But Bray Wyatt's been off our screen for some time, since Mania. Mm, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, so there's been a lot of speculation. Is he still with WWE? Is he going to come back? Is this, that, and next thing? Well, according to Boozer Rasslin, which is a, a Twitter account, who have some insider information, is returning in the very near future. And the speculative okay. belief is that it could be as soon as SummerSlam. So what are we going to see? We're going to see him in, to Cody, yeah, in some of the big stuff. Cody and a it. lot of people are expecting the... Uh, they call it history with Cody now, but like he was part of the whole rookie and um, pro thing that NXT did. Yeah. You know, the same way that Miz and um, Daniel Bryan put yeah. in that say So Cody had um, Husky Harris. So the the belief is that he's going to go into a program with Cody because you know what involves what's involved in finishing the story is, you know, finally beating Brock Lesnar after not beating Roman Reigns and then moving on to then having a, a series of matches with Bray Wyatt and then probably someone else because finishing the story doesn't involve going for the title at all right no, now. probably not. No. Yeah. Yeah. So um, he's still doing side quests, Cody, by the looks of it, mm. and I feel like, uh, or I, I don't feel, the, the internet seems to feel that the, the, the logical connection for Bray Wyatt would be to go into a feud with Cody. The roads belong to the next WrestleMania, clearly. Clearly. Yeah. And this is exactly what I didn't want them to do with Cody, to be honest, is go, well, he lost at this mania, and then we're going to just vamp until the next one. We're just going to it's gonna entertain you. Yeah. It's like, no, you're not. Yeah. It anyway. just it made so much sense to do it there and then, didn't it? And it's like, they're trying to drag it out. And don't get me wrong, as a result of that, the Bloodline stuff has still made sense, but Cody's just been aimlessly fucking... <laughs> this is the issue, but like, so many people have, have sort of tried to defend this and gone, well, you couldn't have him win at that mania because that would have ended the story too quick and it just wouldn't have felt satisfying and fans don't know what they want. So it's like, I know what I wanted. Don't bring them back and put them straight into the main event picture. No. Yeah. Because now it feels like we're trying to drag our feet until the next one. Yeah. But it wouldn't have felt that no. way had he not have been put straight into the main event yeah. title little scene. It won't have the feel that the first one had no. if he gets back there again. It should have been the adversity took place yeah. and then it should have been, it would have made sense. But, but but that was the solution. Don't put him straight into a fucking title match with Roman. No. You know, you, it, don't, you don't put him in a title picture then. You build him up and now it would have just been, oh, he's in a feud yeah. rather than, oh, he's just killing time. Because that's what it feels like. It just feels like he's killing time. Killing time, the Cody Rhodes story. Which you can watch on Peacock on July 3rd. <laughs> Probably. Um, so, yeah, I mean, look, I'm a big... We're big fans of Bray. Picture behind Anthony said. Um, met the guy, cool guy, awesome guy. I want to see the best come from him because I think he's fascinating in everything that he does. <laughs> what? You know what I mean. <laughs> um, <laughs> Damn. But, you know, I like big meaty men <laughs> wrapping meat, so, you, you know, I'm a fan. Uh, but, yeah, it feels like since he's come back, it just hasn't... Like I, I love the whole... You know the white rabbit stuff and like all that. It was brilliant, yeah. and you know they pulled that. So 
I'm not blaming him entirely. I'm sure the storylines do it. And obviously there were some issues to it because they never finished this story. I mean, talk about finishing <laughs> the finished story. fucking story. <laughs> but, like, they obviously had some plans with Alexa and then obviously Alexa had to take some time off. Well, like, uh, uh, Eric Young as well was going to be involved. Exactly. Money. So there was loads of stuff that didn't pan out. So, you know, it's hard to tell because we had to end this where it ended. But it, it's a little bit like watching Lost right now where you get super intrigued and then you don't get the payoff. Yeah. You know, just don't finish the story. And I think, sadly, I think people are going to be. I think he needs to just come back, come back this time, because mm. I think people are, are going to be apprehensive with any sort of mystery or build yeah. this time around. He just needs to be like, hey, yeah, I'm back. I feel bad for uh, for Bo Dallas because uh, clearly he was going to be Uncle Hardy. That was going to be a thing. Yeah, is, like, he, is he still with WWE? Well, he's still there, but I don't that, like. Are they going to reuse that again, or is it going to go I back mean, into just? Oh, that, that that'll be what happens. Bray's back, no gimmick. Yeah, and then Bo's like. Howdy. <laughs> I'd love that for <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, We shall see. Um, speaking of people who may or may not be around for a long period of time, Anthony. So take this with a big fat pinch of salt. So okay. it was uh, Dutch Mantel who was speaking on some podcast and basically believes that WWE don't have any interest in carrying cross anymore. He said, um, well, he said that... They've got no expectations for this feud that he seems to be approaching with him and AJ Styles because they're not expecting anything from it because he's not delivered anything with any of the other feuds he's been involved in. Um, Can you blame Carrion, though? I mean... They've given... I know, like, you know, a truly standout star is someone who can who can make the most of what you give them, but they've given him nothing. Yeah. Well, this is probably the best feud he's had. Yeah. Dutch, Dutch has made the comparison with him and LA Knight, which I'm sure many people have done. And LA Knight got a bit derailed with the whole Max Dupree thing, but then he managed to get his old gimmick back. Whereas Carrion came back in the gimmick that was over in NXT, but it just hasn't translated still on the main roster. But um, Dutch well, was basically saying, well, to be fair, his gimmick is TikTok, TikTok. You can't do nothing with that as a gimmick. But you can. I think the trouble is, they've gone, well, give me the gimmick you had in NXT. But we don't want to make you look like the star you were in NXT. Yeah. I don't blame Carrion for this because in NXT, they were like, he's a massive threat and he's the main guy and he's going to come right in and go after you, mm. right? And in this, they don't really give him the screen time and they make him go after the, like, imagine being such an intimidating figure, but you're like, well, I'm not going to go after Roman. No. Yeah. You know, it's just fucking stupid. So, like, this is probably the best feud he's been in with AJ, but the, the whole TikTok thing could work if they booked him and they treated him. Look, at even the camera work and everything, the way they've treated him in WWE, yeah. in WWE, in the main roster, isn't the same as NXT. No. NXT built him up. Yeah. Like, the way they, the suspense they built and everything built him up like he was a threat. Yeah. Whereas now they don't. It doesn't help the fact he's, like, eating losses like M&Ms. Like, literally every week on SmackDown, he, he loses a random, like, no-nothing match. And it's like... What do you expect? Yes, what's the game here? <laughs> like, it's... But this is the thing, and that to me is a booking problem. Mm. Like, in what way is he uh, in, intimidating? So you can't do the whole, oh, I'm coming to get you, and, like, and then what fucking lose? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no sweat. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, nah. They've just fumbled it massively, so I get your point. Uh, it's hard but to it's kind of... it's not Carrion's fault. Yeah, it, it's hard to kind of blame him. He's kind of just not being given the platform that he needed to get himself over. Justice for Carrion. Justice for Carrion, but... Or yeah. is it because of the hair... Who knows? Shave your head and see. <laughs> That's all it was. It's like the opposite of uh, Samson or whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your, your baldness makes you strong. Um, so yeah, we will see. But according to Dirty Dutch, he doesn't think that uh, Carrion's got much of a future in WWE. So people don't have... <laughs> I had to fight. The... I feel like you gave me this one Sorry. last time. I feel like I've got this one this time because you just want to see me be a Bit of a bell end towards this guy, right? Yeah, well, I'm not gonna. Nah, no. Um, so just a, a quick update on the Pillman stuff. It seems he might be uh, joining WWE. Mm-hmm. He's certainly hinting at that in a recent interview. He's saying he's got some big thing coming. Just you wait and see, yeah. right? But the rumor has it that he won't be able to be signed with WWE. And I don't know if this is a thing generally or just a specific Pillman thing. But uh, the rumour has it, from what we're reading here, is that um, the whole merger between, or the whole Endeavour deal needs to be done and dusted before he'll be able to be signed to NXT. Mm. So it seems that it might not be as soon as people are kind of hoping. But um, it's funny because, and this is what I might be a bit of a cunt, it's funny because he's like, oh, you know, you know, he's got a, a big things planned, he's got a future in wrestling, he can't wait to make more memories. And I was like... More like <laughs> I can't think of one Pillman related memory. Well, yeah. Pillman Junior related memory. Mm. 
Yeah. And you hear things like the other day, like, oh, Brian Pillman Jr. wants to um, be the one who, who uh, like, has the retirement match for Steve Austin or whatever. Of one small match to have Steve Austin. I'm like, but he did that with Kevin Owens. You're just going to be a poor comparison. So let's yeah. leave that be. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> right in my father's coattails. <laughs> well, exactly. Like, you know, <laughs> at least with someone like Cody, he's done the work. <laughs> yeah. To... Well, I, I made this uh, comment previously and got away with this. I'm going to say it again. Cody, comparatively, is a better wrestler than his dad. Yeah, to like, be fair. So you can't really go, well, oh, he's riding his dad's career. So his dad had a hell of a career, yeah. massively respected in the industry for his work both in and out of the ring. Mm-hmm. Cody probably is much worse in the outside of the ring stuff than his dad ever was. Mm. But as a as a wrestler, yeah, he's had a better career, in yeah. all fairness. Yeah, and he's definitely made his mark in like, everything yeah. he's done. Do you know what I mean? Like, like forming AEW, similar to, obviously, the stuff his dad did as a booker. Like, he, he's, he's gone down that path as well. But Brian Pillman, mm-hmm. yeah, what's he done? He he was the worst thing in Varsity Blondes. <laughs> yeah. So it was like... Yes, he was. And AEW clearly saw that, like, we're going to push Julia. Yeah. Which, I mean, fair play. <laughs> and they saw something in it, and they were fucking right. So, yeah. you know. Good decision. But, yeah, I'm uh, I'm very whelmed by the possibility of this. Obviously, if he does it, he goes there, then obviously wish him all the best. But I can't see him translating to the main roster in WWE. I just can't Interestingly, because I thought I was, like, a bit, a bit alone on this, because initially when he left AEW, you saw all the people come out and go, ah, I totally fucking fumbled with him again. You know, the future star in the making, and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get why. And it's nothing against them. He's a, he's a good wrestler, but it just, there was just nothing about him that made me go, this guy's the future, no. you know. And then I'm more and more I'm seeing people going, no, WWE would be good for him because of the way WWE is. It's very scripted, and he probably needs that. And I'm like, okay, that is a fair comment. He yeah. might do better in WWE because they're much more rigid. Yeah, That's, I mean, like literally, he's got no gimmick though, has he? He's like, he's basically his. His dad's son, and he wears sunglasses like, but, a, like a generic. Bro, I'm willing to 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 give. Uh, is it criticism? I'm willing to to sort of. I, I'm not putting the blinders on with AEW. Tony Diz Diz Diz. <laughs> Tony Diz do what, mate? To- <laughs> Tony did and probably does, depending on the wrestler. Still, kind of leave them to their own creative. Yeah, which can be a blessing and a curse. Mm-hmm. But I, I I kind of agree. This guy needs some some sort of direction, and he needs someone to go. This is what your gimmick's going to be. Now put the gladiator mask on. That's an example. Okay. <laughs> May not be the one. But you, you see what I'm saying. Eventually they'll get it right. They'll find the right guy for that role. Listen, you've um, got to be a, like a, a modelling agent. No, no, we've done that. Yeah. We've but done I mean, that. to be fair, like if they are going to ride the whole dad's coattails thing, like at least WWE has got all the, the video well, yeah. library. And yeah, the, they could lean into it considerably better than it, AEW so. could. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I don't expect big things, but prove me wrong, Brian. <laughs> prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Uh, speaking of generic wrestlers who wear sunglasses, um, Orange it's Cassidy. It's like a thing over there. Um, this is surprising. So, he has taken on a role with AEW as a backstage producer. Um, obviously, while he remains an active <laughs> wrestler. and uh, I know he champion. wouldn't be in character in that role, but can you imagine? Can you imagine? So, like, does that look good? And he's just like... Like, um, he approves <laughs> yeah like I mean obviously uh, Brian Danielson has got a similar role who is also an active wrestler so it's not massively uncommon as such but typically to take on those kind of roles as a producer it's the only people who are finished in the ring and so I'm I'm just surprised I guess like the fact that they've given him this as a role like I just didn't expect it you know what I mean obviously he's been around the business for a while don't get me wrong mm. but um, yeah just a. I mean I've not really got that much to say I was just like this is interesting. <laughs> so yeah, yeah it is. apparently he's uh, he's been producing a couple of matches. He did um he did one of the tag team matches with Brian Cage and um the other guy. Um memorable was it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh but he was involved in that. So yeah, he's getting involved in the matches and the flow and and the storyline. So interesting Match and flow. There you go. Match and flow. But yeah, obviously cool news for Mr. Cassidy himself and obviously long may that continue. Maybe he's going to transition into that. But he's obviously he's like what, like thirty nine. I still expect him a couple of years left in the ring. So well, by LA Knight standards, he's got like another decade left in the ring. <laughs> well, exactly. So um, yeah, I mean, sure, I'll exaggerate his age. Yeah. Fascinating, nonetheless. Indeed. Speaking of fascinating, nonetheless, <laughs> um, it's an interesting one, Carl. Interesting because I'm surprised he got away with it, or well, not got away with it. Like you feel like this was probably done with permission because hmm. you wouldn't want to jeopardize your wife's uh, current push. But is it a push if you have the women's tag titles? I'm hoping they treat them with a bit of respect, but they haven't done yet. No. Um, well, anyway, Matt Cardone, a recent um, pay per view in Japan. Apologies, the name of the pay per view escapes me because we are good at our jobs. <laughs> um, appeared 
But came out to the I think ring. It was DDT, wasn't it? Yeah, sure. Came out to the ring where you know donned in his usual clobber, uh, carrying his internet title, etc. But around his waist had what is clearly the women's WWE women's tag title. Mm-hmm. And then the internet went wild. Like I can't believe she'd give him that belt. That's so disrespectful. And then Chelsea had to go on Twitter and go, "It was obviously a replica, <laughs> you dickheads." Yeah. She didn't say it like that, but I mean, kind of like yeah, that. right. So he wore a replica of his wife's title in a pay-per-view match in Japan. Now, the reason I'm like, oh, that's interesting is because you imagine that WWE were fine with him doing this. You imagine that they kind of signed off on this and they're like, yeah, we don't give a fuck, don't worry about it. Mm. Because um, you wouldn't want to be like, oh yeah, I'm going to do something risky, love, sorry. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's an interesting one, that, to be fair. Um, obviously, he's teased quite a few times about going back through WWE and stuff eventually. You wonder whether there is a relationship there with them and or whether, obviously, Chelsea's had to get it cleared. But it's a very... It's a weird thing for her to do on her husband's behalf to be mm. like, do you mind if my husband were like, what, you know what I mean? What a weird thing to have to do. I, don't know. I feel like she asked that question, Triple H was like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, <laughs> maybe he wants to. <laughs> um, but yeah, very weird thing. But um, I mean, it's got people talking, so obviously it's done. I mean, yeah, he's ended up in People the, may in now know the, the thing, like, division. This is where you go, there's obviously no issue with WWE signing off on it. So I, I, I can see why they'd have gone, yeah, we don't, we don't mind at all. Because like you say, all it's done is make people go, that's the WWE title, and they're talking about it now. So, yeah. as you say, not that they needed the publicity, but they fucking got it. Well, no publicity is bad publicity, as they say. Eh, I mean, ask Philip Schofield about that. Well, yeah, there is that. Uh, speaking of bad publicity, um, so I don't know how true this is, but I imagine it is. I don't see why the guy would have any reason to lie. But some dude who's writing a book. <laughs> some dude writing a book. <laughs> I think his name's Brian. Um, interview Bret Hart. Um, not Bill. Um, interviewed Bret Hart for his book and basically revealed that Bret said to him that AEW well he offered AEW basically the chance to have him work backstage as an as an agent or a producer with the company and AEW reportedly turned that down they that only wanted so surprising. they only wanted Bret in like an on, on screen managerial capacity similar to what they've done with like Tully and people like that on Anderson um, so could you imagine the, this man the greatest to ever do it I know oh, do you know what I'll uh, work backstage and work, <laughs> work with your kids and no <laughs> teach them like how to be boss and they're like nah <laughs> like I know a lot of people like oh he's so bitter since you know Goldberg ended his career I wonder why like that man is allowed to be bitter about that shit yeah. but like I know some people don't like Brett for some reason but um, you, no matter whether you love him or hate him you gotta respect the fact that this man knows the business. Mm-hmm. He's probably, like you say, he's one of the best to ever do it for a reason. He knows, um, he's one well, of the safest best there, I would argue. Yeah. Uh, like he is the he business. Knows the business. I mean, like his, his, his dad was enough. the business. Yeah. He's now. Uh, well, I saw a clip quite recently where a young Edge was asking um, Brett how to get into the business. Yeah, it's cool. And it was on like talk shows. Or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fascinating. Um, and I love the honesty there because he weren't like giving him black advice. He was just like, I, like I probably couldn't answer that now. Like, because it's a whole different game to when I did it, and I come from a family of wrestlers. Yeah. And I was like, that's on it. He could have just gone, oh, you really need to do this, or you really need to be one yeah. of the best kid, or you're one of the best. Oh, I'm and say your prayer, yeah. brother. Yeah, which yeah. is probably what Hulk Hogan actually would have said. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he was quite honest about it. Like, you know, build up your, your reputation and your matches, but um, he wouldn't really be able to honestly say how yeah. you get seen because he, yeah. he sort of was already. Absolutely. Kind of thing. Uh, it was quite, I, I don't know, I, I've got a lot of respect for the man. Um, yeah. And I'm so surprised. This is probably the biggest miss I've heard of Tony's well, where you, you talk go, about nah. fumbles of like, oh, they really fumbled Brian. He fumbled fucking Bret Hart by the like, sounds of it. For a man, like, Tony Khan loves wrestling, mm-hmm. but he's he was, was sorely lacking experience. He's obviously gained a lot in the last few years. But how would you not want to take this on? Yeah. That, that's insane to the me. The amount of experience this that this guy could give the whole roster from... In every way, shape, or form, do you know what I mean? Like to not utilize that is just mental to me. But hmm. um, yeah, obviously, the last time we saw him was uh, was a double or nothing when he presented the new the, the AW World Title. Uh, we haven't seen him since, so shame, massive yeah. shame. But obviously, with with Collision um, being a thing now, and you think, well, uh, need yeah, more FTR and, more... and Punk love Brett. Yeah, like they need more producers and more agents now. The might... show. Imagine if Collision becomes a show. I'd love it to be fair. Um, obviously, as you say, he's, he's massively in with uh, with FTR and Punk. Not that he needs to have an in because he's Brett the fucking Putting Hitman yeah. hard. They're, but, they're in with him. Yeah, exactly. So baffling if true. Indeed, um, baffling. It, baffling if true. Baffling. That's I like that. I like it. Um, we yeah. should do a whole segment on that. Baffling yeah, if true. Baffling just if true. Pick up some wrestling rumors. I like that. 
<laughs> yeah, coming soon. Making segments on the fly. So yeah, Tony, you normally have my full support, but this one is a bit batshit crazy if it's true. So, you can't what, what you be thinking? serious. <laughs> uh, uh. Anyway, Carl, Speaking Alicia Fox. Fox. <laughs> <laughs> so as we all know, Alicia Fox has recently made, or is recently, has she done it yet? Mm-hmm. Yeah, don't want to make sure I'm behind the times here. Has recently made her in-ring return and has, in a recent interview, so it gave some details about who she'd love to face. Mm-hmm. And um, whilst it, this is a suggestion of her dream opponents, she listed about four or five. So I don't know if you can necessarily go dream opponent because, mm. you know, she's given a couple of options there. Notably, Diana Prato, TNT. No, not TNT. Fuck. I went to back to Liverpool for a second <laughs> there. TNA. Yeah. Impact. Impact. Um, yeah. But a lot of the ones she was listing, funnily enough, were AEW. So it mm. makes you wonder, is she AEW bound, potentially? She Maybe. wanted to see Tony Storm, Ruby Riot, and uh, Soraya. All of them. So you go, well, you know, that's, you know, you have some time in AW, you can face all of those guys probably. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, she was on Total Divas with Soraya and Ruby, I think, towards the end of the show. Uh, I don't know if she had any interaction with Tony, but obviously, she's the world champ, so it would probably come up in conversation. Yeah. And but, um, um, I, like, by all accounts, she's quite well respected in the business, despite, you know, from a fan base point of view, people weren't that big on it. Mm. She's quite well respected. Remember that story business, came out, didn't it? Of like, like what she was like backstage and yeah, stuff, yeah. and was always like proper helpful. To yeah, people, and the, you know? the most welcoming to new talent and stuff mm. like that. You so, know, so yeah, respect like, where respects you. you know? yeah. It sounds like she's like she's been through a bit of a ride as well over the last couple of years. So I'd, mm. I'd like to hope that you know if she is returning to wrestling, that she does get another opportunity on stuff because yeah. you know all the nice things people have said about her. I think she deserves that. But... I mean, to be honest, the reality is, as much as I um, I moan about certain wrestlers, I'm not a fan of. I, I think anyone who can get anywhere close to doing what they want to do and, and live in their dream should be able to. So, Hell you yeah. know, hats off to her. Follow your dreams. Buy the dream you wish of a jellyfish. No. <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah. Shameless plug. Indeed. Um, but, yeah, no, you're right. Like, literally, go for it. Make it happen. Exactly. Um, and I hope she does. Uh, so this next one is very sad. Basically, um, on Raw this week, there was an angle where Kevin Owens got taken out by Judgment Day. And he was really selling the ribs. Um, he wasn't involved in a match. He was involved the previous week in a match, but this week he was just kind of stood there on the stage and then got attacked. Um, but it's been reported by Fightful and also by a guy called Kermit on Reddit, who tends to be pretty well sourced on the things he says. Um, I said it, it's a legit injury. Apparently, he's broken some ribs. Oh no! So I don't. I think Fightful said there's no timeline at the minute on his return, but he's the current tag team champion. Now, I know tag team wrestling is not really a thing in WWE, so he can probably still keep hold of the belt for the next six months without much of a problem. But um, it does make you wonder if he's going to be off for a certain amount of time, are they going to have to do something where they do drop the belts? Um, Interesting. Which would be a shame. But I hope not, because let's face it, they've been able to be like on screen and around without having many matches anyway. Yeah. So it's not, not exactly. like you can't do that. Yeah. I mean, like... If the, what they did, minds, you know. Yeah, if what they did on Raw was to like write him off for a bit while he gets some surgery or gets if I don't can you have surgery on broken ribs? I don't really know. Um but yeah, something is clearly going on there with that. So hopefully they don't write him off. Hopefully he can still be around and still be part of the show. But yeah, if he's not gonna be around for a bit, maybe the tag titles might have to change, I'm not too sure. But whatever's going on, obviously we love KO and wish him obviously a speedy recovery. Indeed, um, indeed. Terrible news. And I just even like say even injured. I still want his antics and his rants. His yeah. rants are fucking oh, exactly. spectacular at the minute. Yeah, exactly. the unwritten rule that still gets me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully he's back. So just a quick one. This one, Carl. Um, rumor has it that WrestleMania Forty One, uh, the location of the front runner for is the location London? of, is Minneapolis, Minnesota. Uh, the US Bank Stadium is the front runner. For the location for WrestleMania Forty One, so we have to wait a little bit longer for WrestleMania London. Mm. I'm sorry. John Cena's plea did not work. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, just a quick update on that one. I think as well they've suggested that Tampa, Florida may actually be the location for Royal Rumble 24 as well, but none of these have been confirmed at this point. So just a little little quick visit I to mean, the rumor mill. If they go down to Minnesota, then I think, you know, that's Brock's hometown, isn't it? I know he lives in Canada now, but um, maybe we'll get to see a bit of a homecoming thing for Brock there. Maybe, maybe. even a retirement match for Brock. Maybe. Could you imagine? Um... But yeah, shame it's not London. Hopefully one day. Hopefully one day. Yeah, maybe. Maybe if John keeps petitioning for us. Yeah, it'll take WrestleMania over here to be the one show where we go. All right, we'll go and watch it. 
Because that's just the kind of people we Except have. It'll take that long, it would be like, all right, we'll go. <laughs> Although we may find out this week whether we have media passes for All In. Not holding my breath. Um, but, you never know. <laughs> Not holding my breath. The Carl story. <laughs> Um, so yeah that was the news this week um, let us know what you think of all the news stories leave a comment below uh, drop a like drop a sub if you're not subbed already um, you know if you're listening to this leave us a review download the episode can you follow the show follow the show just the sh- not us just the sh- <laughs> okay. don't be showing up outside my house <laughs> not the last time um, uh, but yeah do all that good stuff um, you know audio still growing after all this time which is good because we, we went all in with YouTube um, thanks to our wonderful fans the subs are growing too exactly you've got so. more subs than Jared at this point man <laughs> don't no one wants to be compared to that guy right now <laughs> let's be fair I didn't compare you I said you got more subs than him which is probably true yeah and much less criminal (laughs) offences um but yes so do let us know in the comments what you think of the news um what else we got coming up this week obviously rapid roundup go and check that out if you're not already we condense all of aw wwe's wrestling down to about 16 minutes um which is longer than (laughs) you know some other things longer than a goldberg match (laughs) (laughs) um and we've also got a return of push or flush this time going uh, all in on the attitude. I don't care if you like this segment. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> we like it. Um, but no, it was voted for by you, so you better fucking watch it. Um, but yeah, so until then, we will catch you on the next one.